everybody and welcome back to Luca Plays. If it's your first time here, double welcome to you. Also, I love you. I am Luca, the number one fan of Shadowrun. And today, we are going to start a full let's play of Shadowrun Hong Kong. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've been in this universe. And I'm very, 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 very excited to be playing this one in particular. Because it has very good characters, very good story. Um, it's also built... So much better than Shadowrun Returns and Shadowrun Dragonfall. It's a very good and cool game, and I'm very excited. Um, this is also the start of my full campaign of fuck Cyberpunk, play Shadowrun, um, because Shadowrun is infinitely fucking cooler than Cyberpunk. And you can play it right now. No delays. You can play Shadowrun right now. But like, hey, before I even start with this, uh, you can, um, there will be a link down in the description to buy like the full Shadowrun trilogy. Uh, do that. Do it. Do it. I don't know what we're going to do with um, our character here. I think I just want to do a human. Or maybe, or maybe we will do... Well, let's see. All humans have a plus three karma to the start of the game. Oh, that's fine. All I also have plus one karma. Hmm. Hmm. So, dude, I. Here's the thing. I know in the last two I did play uh, a Decker, um, but like Decker's cool. It's especially cool in this one where it's like it's not just combat but blue. It's like an actual full different thing and it's very cool um so i think we'll go human we'll go decker um there's one in particular that i think we're gonna i think we'll Is that our shadow one returns character actually it would be appropriate if this was the same portrait we used for shadow run returns because of where this goes and where it starts and how uh how things work in this game um, uh, I want, like, a longer... Do you have a longer side cut, maybe? I know you do. In fact, I am incredibly confident that you do. I mean, there's that, but that's not... Oh, no, that's the one. That's not a side cut, though. That's too short. I guess we'll do that. That's not quite... Oh, no! What's up with that? What's the difference? Between oh, this one has like... Ooh, that's multicolor. I like that, actually. Let's do that. Uh, alright. Boom. Points. Okay, so we need intelligence. We need to put points into decking. Alright. Can I put another five? No, that's a lot. Actually. So we don't need to increase our intelligence later, I guess. Um, do I want rifle or do I want shotgun? Maybe we'll just do pistol. No, let's do rifle. Oh, I need to try. Oh, right. Ranged combat is very expensive. You have to do points in range combat and also in specific gun. Uh... I'm thinking, I do like, I do just like having like a pistol, but like that's, that's too, that's too chill. Actually, no. I, th I feel like we're going to be somewhat squishy. We need, we need dodge. Dodge is good. I think that's, oh fuck. All right, well maybe I'm going a little bit overboard. Hey, we need actually charisma. Charisma is very important. Uh, we should have Shadow Runner. Actually, we should have Gang. I put two points in. Could do that. That. 
Yeah, that'll be good. Uh, and then we'll do Shadowrunner Etiquette. Okay. This one lets you do a first name, a last name, and a street name, which is, I think, different from Returns and Dragonfall, which just, like, made you do a street name. Um... I think we'll do this. And then we'll do that. The Bubuski was our first one. Yeah, Alyssa was our second character. And Alley Cat will be... That'll primarily be, I think, the name that we go by in this one. This one has a cutscene too, by the way. It has an animated cutscene at the start. So I'll be quiet. I know we haven't spoken in a while, but I need your help. Remember the day I took you and Duncan off the streets? I told you that the past is just a story, that if you can just accept that, your past loses all power over you. Yeah. <laughs> I was wrong. I'm on my way to Hong Kong now, to finish something. I should have faced a long time ago. And you. I need you with me. I know we're not blood and we didn't leave things in a good place. But you and Duncan are the only real family I have. Please. If our past means anything to you, meet me in Hong Kong right away. I'll explain more when you get here. I'm begging you. I'm almost out of time. So, also... I think with this one, I will also be trying to do as much lore information as I can. Um, so like, if there if there are terms or entities in this game that the game doesn't really properly explain, I will do a little on text on screen text thing. Um, kind of like doing a soft explanation of what those concepts are. Um, the first one I kind of want to hit is the fact that in this future, in Shadowrun, in, I think it's like 20, 2056, it said, uh, Hong Kong uh, is free from China, which is fucking rad. Unfortunately, uh, that was taken advantage of by mega corpse and the like. Um, so now Hong Kong is like mega, mega capitalist dystopia. Um, it's a bad scene. Um Anyway, Raymond Black, the old man gave you a home once, took you and Duncan off the gang-ridden streets of the Barrens, sheltered, abandoned, uh, educated, slapped sense into you both until you almost resembled productive members of society. Um, the Barrens are an area in Seattle, in Redmond. Um, it's, a, it's effectively just like a ghetto. Um, it's also overrun with ghouls, which are, I mean, imagine like fallout feral ghouls, and that's, you basically get the gist there. And then you took off, left it all behind, landed behind bars for a time, tried to start a new life after that. It's been eight years since you've heard Raymond's voice until out of the blue you got this cryptic message, a plea for help. Meet me in Hong Kong right away. And wired to your account, enough New Yen to pay for the flight and then some. New Yen is the universal currency all around the world now. It's New Yen. It's, that's self-explanatory. Um, the descent is rough. A squall comes out of nowhere, sending a solid sheet of rain punching into the suborbital transport. With a ragged shudder, the plane finally skids to a halt at the edge of the Czech Lobcock tarmac. An hour and an interminable number of emotionless security checkpoints later, you hail a water taxi to Victoria Harbor. Hong Kong looms ahead, pulsing with energy. Alright, let's do it. Important to note, the game is presented very much the same as the first two were. It's 
of it's a CRPG. It's it's got to be similar. You step from the churning water, uh, the churning of the water taxi to the ponderous rocking of the docks. Your stomach lurching at the transition. As soon as you're clear, the captain nods once and steers the small craft back into the harbor. The man never said a word. Just handed you a worn brown duffel bag when you stepped on board, filled with some gear, some stiff new body armor, and a note. Better safe than sorry. D. Above, smog, thick clouds hang low in the s above. Wait, hold on. I need to get. I need to get into like reading mode. Because, like, this is going to be a lot of reading. Above, smog thick clouds hang low in the sky, reflecting the lights of the city in a nauseating swirl. The wind changes direction more than once, creating a heady stew of aromas. Diesel, sea salt, street food, and filth. It's all you can do to keep your in-flight meal where it belongs. I'm very used to, like, reading on stream, where I'm, like, kind of skimming and, like, skipping over things that aren't necessary. Um, that's, we're not doing that here. Two figures stand waiting in the dim light of the pier. The first is an orc, lean with in-your-face muscles and a jaw made to break fists. The second is an elf, one hand resting casually against her hip. Raymond Black is nowhere to be seen. Well, don't you look like shit. Duncan Wu, the closest thing you have to a brother. You haven't seen the man in eight years. Still as charming as ever. He grins. Green's not really your color, Brubusky. Doesn't go with a nice new armor I got you. As you open your mouth to respond, something shifts alarmingly in your stomach. A liquid, bubbling sensation. Uh, tough it out. Don't know what you're talking about. Must be the harbor lights messing with you. Must be. Guess you've still got some of your old fortitude, at least. He laughs. Considering how much synthahol we used to put down, I'd be surprised if you can handle a little chop. Anyway, we gotta find Raymond. Find Raymond? I thought he'd be here. Never showed up. He's still got that same baritone rasp. Had it since he was 12. Wu developed early. Um, no clue where he might be? No. Wu rubs his head. But I just checked in with the local PD in the morgue. If he's dead, his body hasn't turned up yet. That's a good sign, I guess. You worried? Yeah, I'm worried. Wu rubs his head. He's an old man, and he's out there alone somewhere. 65 isn't that old, Duncan. Of course not, but... York bows his head. His voice sounds far away. He's not the same, Boobusky. Raymond hasn't been himself in a long time. How so? He's been restless, staying in his study, inside his own head a lot, and he barely sleeps anymore. I've been worried about him, but I haven't figured out what to do about it. He looks up at you and shrugs. And I didn't have a sister to turn to. Hell... Wasn't too sure you were even alive still, until Raymond managed to track down your number. Woman standing beside him breaks in. We should get going, Duncan. Head back to the meeting point in case your dad shows up. Copy that, Sarge. They're wearing Lone Star body armor. Looks like Duncan Wu's gone private police. Uh, you his girlfriend or so No, you his partner? Unfortunately, yes. Although partner's not the right word for it exactly. I like superior officer better. She grins. I let him carry my coffee for me, write my parking tickets, that kind of thing. The woman taps her chest with an armored finger. Carter. I figured I could use some backup. Didn't know what Raid gotten himself into, and I wasn't sure you were going to show up. It's a tossed off remark, but there's an undercurrent of resentment in it. Um, well, surprise, here I am. Yeah, well, I wasn't so sure, you know. He shakes his head. Hey, look, I'm glad you're here, Bubusky. Seriously, but I'm gonna need some time to get used to having you around again. Been a while since I heard from you, know what I mean? Memories of sleepless nights in lockup flash by, wondering if you'd ever see Duncan or Raymond again, wondering if you even wanted to. And then, stepping out into the daylight, suddenly free, the fallout of some obscure corporate restructuring, a few hundred new yen worth of apology from your former jailers, jailers and a decision to start a new life, to leave the past behind. All of it. Until now. Um... I had my reasons. Can we leave it at that for now? Wu stares at you, his goggles reflecting the harbor lights. Sure. He scans the waterfront, frowning. Let's just find Raymond. He was supposed to meet us in the plaza on the other side of this pier. The sooner we find him, the sooner you can all have a big happy family reunion over dinner. Carter grins. 
And the sooner I can find a place to get a drink around here. Yeah, I'm right. Ahead of you, Hong Kong rises serpent-like from the sea. Government and Megacorp coiled together, writhing in their basket of institutionalized corruption. No one can tell where the snake's body ends and its tail begins. That's what Raymond used to say. Duncan turns and starts down the pier. Carter follows. Hmm. That, that's, what, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Like, Hong Kong is very hyper-capitalist. The, the Megacorps are very much entwined with the government. Um, in fact, they may as well be the government. Um, and if there's something you should know about Shadowrun, uh, it's that Megacorps are bad. <laughs> They're not, not a good scene if, uh, if a Megacorp is in control anywhere. The guard shack at the end of the pier is dark and empty. Duncan gives the gate a push, but it doesn't budge. Huh. Well, that was open earlier. Duncan frowns. Looks pretty solid. Shouldn't there be someone here to let us out or something? Yeah, it smells a little funny, don't it? Carter shrugs. Who knows? It's Hong Kong. Not exactly sure how things work around here. Come on, rookie. We can cut through the construction site. I hate it when you call me that. Whoa, hey, full sprint. I forgot how fast the sprint is in this game. I'm used to playing pillars. The gate is locked, but the nearby control panel appears accessible. Carter pulls it open with a metallic screech that pierces your skull, sending a new wave of pain down to your churning stomach. She examines the control panel for a moment, then throws Wu a backwards glance. Looks like there's another way off the docks on the other side of this gate. I think that I can bypass the lock. Uh, let me take a crack at it. Carter steps aside to let you get at the panel. Enjoy. This is a civilian area, and security is light. You bypass the door circuit with ease. The gate rattles open. Let's not let them know that I'm like a big old criminal. Big old shadow running criminal. Oh. Hello. Do I have a weapon? The group on the dock was fishing a package out of a speedboat when you surprised them. Now the package is at the bottom of the bay and the speedboat is disappearing into the distance. They close on you, red-faced and yelling. The light of the harbor glints off of their weapons as they approach. The leader shouts something in Cantonese, but it's too fast to make out. You're rusty. It's been years since Raymond's house and the language lesson that wouldn't end. The old man never spoke anything but his native language at home. Wu speaks with authority. His Cantonese is as solid as ever. He never let it drop. You guys doing some late night fishing? The smuggler smiles. Oh yeah, we're fishing for assholes. Wu points at their weapons. You're gonna need some better bait. All you're gonna catch with that is trouble. Um. We're just passing through. Why don't you put the guns away? Their spokesman laughs, looks at his crew. Hey, you talk good Cantonese, baby. Real authentic. He keeps laughing. Actually, you just told me you were going to crap a gun. Wu flashes his badge. Lone Star, put the guns down. The smuggler squints at Wu's badge and smiles at his friends. Never seen a badge like that before. Either it's fake or you're some kind of security guard. He grasps his rifle. Either way, this ends the same. I think he's done talking. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do some shoot bangs. Been a bit. Uh, how does this game go? Oh, yeah, we're playing on easy, by the way, because this game is kind of not fun on, like, higher difficulties. Um, but I say that about every CRPG. So that should not be anything new coming from me. Do you not have a gun, Carter? What the fuck? I will say, combat is... I, I, I'll say it now, just to get it out of the way. Combat is almost always the worst part of any CRPG. The best part of CRPGs is the, is the conversation, dialogue, characters, story, all that good stuff. Not, not a big uh, combat person in CRPGs. Um, I want to kill this guy real quick. Thank you.
Are you magic? You are magic, yeah. Alright. Bam. Bam. Duncan. Do a kill. Excellent. Carter. Oh, that... Wow, that killed? Wow. Good job. Uh... Risky. Alright, Duncan, move in. Oh, he didn't leave. Crazy. Uh... There we go! Good at video games. Ooh, look. A pickup. Oh, he drugs. I was right. Saw that later. None of my characters do drugs. At least not hard drugs. Is there anything else to look at here? No. Another gate panel. This one's been vandalized and busted up good. A real nightmare of a repair job. Wu stares at the fence, considering. Loops and whorls of razor wire glitter in the lamplight. Looks edged with monofilament. The corporations here don't screw around. Um... Why don't we just cut ourselves an opening? She shakes her head. Even if you could, it'd snap back on you. Ever seen a high-tension wire whip through a human body? You don't want to. Duncan nods his agreement. We aren't touching it. How about it, Carter? Think you can get the gate open? She winks at him. What do you think? She eyeballs the job. It'll take me a few minutes, though. Frowning, she leans in to get a closer look at the mangled fuse box. A few seconds later, she starts pulling wires and yanking fuses. A look of intense concentration on her face. She's competent. In Cantonese, Bubuski. He sounds like Raymond when he does that. <coughs> She's competent. <laughs> I know. She runs the riot squad that I'm signed to. He continues in Cantonese. We speak only Cantonese from now on. Just like we did when we lived at Raymond's. Those endless drills are about to pay off. Uh, it's coming back. Won't be a problem. He nods once, satisfied, then turns his back and scans the horizon. At least you can still handle yourself in a fight. <coughs> Duncan's voice is going to kill me, probably. So you're Lone Star now, huh? His back still to you. That's right. Aren't you wondering what I've been up to for the last eight years? Still giving you his back. Nope. The silence between you gets louder, heavier. Then it's broken by a sudden wailing screech. Wu's hand goes to his holster. The screech is replaced by the sound of grinding wheels. Glancing over to the console, you see Carter grinning back at you. Got it. Thanks, Carter. You're cool. I like you. The light from the nearby vendor stall stabs into your eyes, th triggering a throbbing ache in the back of your skull. You stop short, squinting as rough voices drift in on the wind. Where's everyone else? Where's the damn shipment? I haven't seen them yet. We just got here. The voice becomes irritated. Long way's probably waiting for us so we can haul it out of the boat for him. That lazy bastard. Let's just get out of here. Let's just hang out here. Let him find us. Carter keeps her voice low. Looks like we're on a stroll through Smuggler Central. These gangers don't know we're here. We could probably just slip past. <laughs> or we could clip them. They're, they're already looking for us. Might be better to take them out now while we've got the element of surprise on our side. Oh yeah, this is a fun mechanic that they, I think, added in this one. But, like, you can just, like, decide that you want to get into a combat altercation. Uh, which is very fun. I like that a lot. Because you totally get the element of surprise if you do this. Which we're totally going to do. Because I... I'm epic. I don't know why that's the word that came to my brain just then. It's 
It's not something that I ever say, and yet it's the word that my brain chose. Alright. Oh shit. Really wish there was an undo button on this game. I was just trying to shoot that man and now Duncan's right in the thick of it. Which might be beneficial. Because now they're gonna disrupt their positions. Can I make you go first? Oh yeah, I can make whoever I want go first. I forgot about that. Uh, let's heal Dunko. Alright. Good cover there, actually. You're dead. I just need to be very sure of where I'm clicking before I click. That's that's the main thing. Uh, take more free stuff. I believe there's a here. Yes. Uh, oh. Uh, we got karma. Should we bother? Nope. We'll wait until we, like, we level up. Or, like, you know, get proper big point. Hello, people. <gasps> my god! I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna withhold my excitement for now. Hold on. Crossing the street, you can make out four shadowy figures loitering in the plaza ahead. Troll, orc, dwarf, elf. Two men, two women. They're different from the smugglers on the dock. Alert, poised, professional. You can see they've made a token attempt to conceal their weapons. By the way, this this world, uh, while it is... It does... It is kind of trying to, like, retain some level of accuracy to our world. I don't think I've talked about this a whole lot, actually. I didn't address this at all. There's... Okay, I think somebody just followed me on Twitch. I don't know why that's playing through my other scene. Why did it do that? That's so weird. Um, well, while it does try to maintain some level of accuracy to our world, there's obviously the shit like magic, and there's like, there's races like elves and dwarves and stuff like that. Um, this game doesn't get into it very much. It's not really relevant, so I don't know if I'll get into it. Um, but it, there's short version is that our world currently, as we know it, is still very young. And as a world gets older, magic starts to come into it. Um, and then that's sort of what happened to this world where like, I think the first event was like, the first magical event was like, um... It's oh my god! It's so much! It's so much! Actually, the more I try to explain it, the more I'm like, oh, this is actually a lot. Okay, so magic came back to the world, boom, bing, bang, boom. That's done. Bad people started being born as elves and dwarves. That's okay. But that's fine. We got that. People suddenly transformed into like, into uh, trolls and orcs, like these two. Just like not not born as that. They were probably human or elves or dwarves. And then just suddenly in the middle of their day, they turned into orcs and trolls like like in a flash. Like they were suddenly like they had always been that. And I think that's kind of fucked up. And it's wild to me that that's a part of Shadowrun lore. That people just turned into orcs and trolls. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. That's the whole that, that was all that preamble was just to get across that single point. The, the origins of orcs and trolls in this world is fucked up. And I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna carry on. The unspoken message is clear. We're strapped, mind your manners. Wu stands up tall, takes that amused tone he gets whenever he's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with someone bigger. Someone who doesn't know they're about to go down. Evening, folks. You got permits for those bazookas? The thick troll pulls his mouth into a comic frown. Permits? Hmm, give me a minute. He makes a show of patting his pockets. 
Nope, guess not. I must have dropped mine in a, in a dumpster, along with the last idiot who stepped to us. Wu coolly surveys the scene, nods in a friendly fashion. Is that right? Well then. You can almost feel Wu's cop training kick in. It's like watching a drone execute a command routine. He reaches for his rifle, brings it up quick, but it's too late. By the time it hits shoulder level, an assortment of nasty-looking ordnance is already trained on his head. Carter backs him up. She whips her arms forward, fists blazing with magical fire. Her eyes sweep the scene, darting from one figure to another. All right, everyone, just be cool. I re Oh, wait, you know what? Hold on. I hate getting Steam overlay notifications while I'm playing a game, so I had to fix that. Uh... The thick troll's voice is casual, amused. He shakes his gun in Wu's face. Little late for that, isn't it? Uh... 